Hello. Hey. I'm sorry. I haven't posted for a while. I, mean, I was running. I was running away from all all the build pipelines because uh, they're way too complex for small things. But at the same time, extremely useful. <clears throat> but uh, now, finally, E6 modules are here. So uh, let's take a look how they work. And uh, this is a game changer for some of you. See you at the desk. All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> Woo! Ah, JavaScript modules, what a ride. In the early days, the amount of JavaScript on a website was minimal. It might show an alert box, make something scroll, or show a ticking clock. Most scripts exposed a global variable when included in the page, and this made it difficult to compose components into useful programs. The JavaScript community started to build code import features. The first which I remember seeing was Require.js. Require.js exposed a function called require, which allows you to import modules and namespace your module by scoping it inside a function. The next game changer came with Node.js. Node used the same syntax for importing code, but Node's require function was not the same. It was oriented around a local file system and didn't need to support asynchronous importing. Shortly after Node.js became popular, developers started baking their programs together into a single file usually referred to as the bundle. With ECMAScript 6, the E6 module syntax was defined and was quickly picked up by transpilers and bundlers and it became a part of the modern build pipeline. The problem with the bundler is that once you've chosen a bundler path, it is very hard to go back. You now have to run your build pipeline and solve a plethora of new problems in order to make web development sweet again. Tons of tools have helped us make this a breeze. Community contributions like Webpack has really made all the difference when it comes to having the cake and eating it at the same time. Today, we can use the E6 module syntax natively. Let's take a look at how this syntax compares to the traditional inline imports and learn what benefits we get. We're gonna make a program here now that draws two shapes on the screen. We're gonna draw on the canvas. I'm gonna use this little fictitious library that I come up with. The library contains mainly of a shape class that looks like this. The shape class has a color and it has a position and a size. It also has a method that can draw on the context. It draws using the color set at the position of this size. The size and position are vector twos and they come from the math library here. And the color is a class that holds RGB values that can convert them into hex. We also have two constants, and it's just two instances of color, one that is purple and one that is pink. In the main file is where we're gonna write the program. And first, we're gonna define a rectangle. So we say const rect equals new shape. Then we want the rectangle to be purple. So we can say rect.color.copy. And we copy from the colors.purple. We want the size to be 200 by 60. So you say rect.size.set200 by 60. And finally, we want to move the position a little bit. So we say rect.position.set20 and 10. Now, in order to draw this rectangle, we need to access the canvas context. We can do that by saying const context equals document dot get element by id we say screen here and then we say get context and a 2d context and now we can say rect dot draw and draw in context we save this file and now we should see a purple rectangle being drawn there it is for good measure we're going to add another shape this next shape is going to be a square. Const square equals new shape. And we say square.color.copy. And we copy from colors.pink. Then we say square.size.set 60 by 60. And we say square.position.set 
and we set it at 150 and 200, I guess. Then finally, we draw the square. Square dot draw on context. Now we have two shapes here, and this is a program. The problem with this program is that we can access all the program's components directly in the global scope. That means I can write shape here. I can also access vector2 and I can access the colors. This is all fine for a small program, but as programs grow, we are likely to have collisions with names and have a hard time scaling our project. It also can be a little bit dangerous because if you happen to pick a name for any of the components that were served from the browser, for example, then your program will stop working. We can mitigate this by creating a module system in JavaScript. Previously, we have had module systems that called require and uh, common.js, and they work fine. We can use them with Browserify or Webpack, for example, to build our projects, but this is now available directly in the browser. So Webpack and Browserify and those other components are still very good for bundling things, but now we can leverage modules directly in the browser without having to have a build pipeline. So let's see how we can refactor this project to leverage browser modules. The first thing you want to make sure of is that your Chrome version is late enough to support modules. Whoop. This became available in Chrome 61. So make sure you're running Chrome 61 by going to help about Chrome and it should say at least 61 here. So we go to our code here and we find index.html and the first thing you want to do is remove these inline dependencies. We save that. And now we should have an error when we run this. The shape is not defined. In order to have shape accessible, we need to import it. So we go to main.js and in the top of the file, we write import shape from .lib shape.js. Let's see what happens now. Another error, unexpected token import. This is because in order to have access to the import, this is because in order to have access to the import keyword, we must, in order to have access to the import keyword, we need to specify that this script is a module. We can do that by adding the attribute type equals module. Let's refresh and see what happens. Fail to load module script. The server responded with the non-JavaScript MIME type. This is because I'm running this directly from the file protocol. And we can't do that because we need to read the MIME type of the file in order to import it. So I'm going to go here to my terminal and I'm going to start a little web server. Here I'm running serve and you can see that it has served this directory on localhost port 5000. So let's go there and see what happens. Oop, still syntax error. The request the module does not provide an export name default. This is because we haven't explicitly exported anything from our shape.js. So let's go to shape.js and just before class here, export default class shape. So now we got past that. The reason we write export default is because in the import here, we import directly from this file. There's another way to import components from a module, and we're going to use that in the shape.js. As you see, shape.js could not find color. So we need to import color class in shape.js. Up here, we're going to say import color from .math.js. But now we haven't exported the color from math.js, so we go back to math.js and we say export class color. Now this is exported, and because we omit the default keyword here, we now have to define in shape that we want color explicitly from math.js. Now we have another error, vector2 is not defined, and we simply have to export that too. We can simply do that by appending vector2 here. And in math.js we need to make sure we export it. 
Now colors is not defined in main.js here. So let's go and fix up that file. First, we need to import this color class. Import color from math.js. There's a few ways to export this object here, but I'm gonna pick the one that I think reads the best. So we're gonna take this and say export const purple, get rid of the colon here and replace it with an equal sign. Then do the same thing for pink. There we go. So the equivalent of this in ESX modules is this one. We're also going to do a quite particular import. So when we go back to main.js, we're going to say import star as colors from dot lib colors.js. So first of all, let's see if this works. And yeah, now we have updated everything in the program to make it work. Import star simply means import all exports from this file. We could also type out the colors explicitly to say purple and pink. And then remove the prefix here. This also works as you see, it's mostly a matter of taste. But when you do this explicit import, and if you make a typo, you will get a syntax error instead of an undefined constant. So what are the benefits of using these imports? The first one is that now we don't contaminate the scope. If we want to have it in the scope, we can choose to do so. Anywhere in the file, we can say window.shape equals shape, for example. Now we explicitly export it. But we don't want that to happen automatically. Another huge benefit is to only have one obvious entry point of a program. So you have the main file here, and then the main file defines how everything is inherited. This means that we have a nice tree structure, and not just put everything in one file. Another benefit of using these imports is that we can have custom names. So if we for example don't think shape is a good name for this object in this context, we can rename this to drawable. And the program still works.